Let, let's talk about what asthma is because you say it and everyone thinks they know what it is, but do they actually know what it is? Um, I've seen it described in a number of different ways. One is that it's a controllable but uncurable disease, uh, and which, which makes sense, but also doesn't stack up in that you can have juvenile asthma and it doesn't necessarily progress into adult asthma. Um, it's an immune system sensitivity causing airway constriction and spasm. That seems to be the key term. The National Institutes of Health define it as such. Chronic lung disease characterized by episodes of airway narrowing and obstruction. Again, there's the term. That, that's really what we're talking about here. Causing wheezing, coughing, chest tightness, shortness of breath. You might see all that lumped together under the term dyspnea. It's basically just labored breathing. So the, those are how the symptoms manifest. Um, the first question, Jonathan, go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll go for it. And he says, <laughs> what effect does asthma have on performance? Because this is a very valid question. Why Absolutely. does everybody seem to be fast, but also have asthma? <laughs> for sure. So it, it turns out very little. And, and mm -hmm. this is evidenced all the way up to the highest levels, Olympic world level competition. So for everything I'm going to share from this point forward, I, I called this all from about five different resources. Um, I won't burden you with all the details on them. Suffice it to say, one was a systematic review and analysis on airway hyperreactivity. One was a review of 45 studies that looked at the effects of endurance training on respiratory health. One was an overview of exercise and asthma, how the two work together. And then asthma as a consequence of endurance sports was a question that one of them asked is, is because as is asthma because of endurance sports. And then the final one was uh, bronchial hyper responsiveness and physical activity. So we're going to link those two things together. So let me start by saying that uh, roughly 90%, you know, according to these resources, of asthma sufferers suffer from what's termed exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. This is the more favorable term, or I think it is the term now to replace exercise-induced asthma, because that term implied that exercise caused asthma, and that was something that we wanted to, or experts wanted to dispel. So exercise-induced, it's pretty straightforward, it happens because of exercise bronchoconstriction. So when you look at the, the path of air into the lungs and, and back out, all the way down at the end of it, you've got bronchioles. These are the, the narrowest bre uh, airway tubes. And uh, these are the ones that fuse into the alveoli, which is where the gas exchange takes place. Oxygen, or carbohydrate, <laughs> carbon dioxide <laughs> exchange with one another. So, so that's where gas exchange takes place. So if the, if the breathing airways leading up to that constrict, obviously that gas exchange is going to be impeded. What's important here is that you can experience exercise induced bronchoconstriction without being asthmatic. So if you're in the boat where you think I've, I've probably got asthma, well, not necessarily. There are a lot of things that can, can cause this EIB without actually meaning that you have asthma. So the, it, it, this exercise induced bronchoconstriction is an airflow obstruction that follows an exercise challenge. So you can tie it directly to its cause. It's pretty easy to see. There's an airway narrowing, which causes increased airway resistance. And this is during or after exercise. And a lot of the time, maybe all the time, perhaps this is due to a drying out of the airways. And this causes something called hyperosmolar environment, a hyperosmolar environment, which is basically just higher blood concentration. You know, you, there's less water plasma, you've dehydrated, dehydrated your blood, dehydrated you. And this leads to what's termed a mast cell mediator release, which is really just a fancy term for allergic response. Beauty of this is, is it's very manageable. If you know this is something that affects you, hit the inhaler before you, before you do your workout. Okay. So somewhat, somewhat contrary to the whole idea of performance limitation is that endurance exercise has demonstrated positive impacts on asthma. So it, it's demonstrated improved capacity, even in the face of asthma, reduced asthma symptoms and increased quality of living, which was a, a measure that a lot of these studies leaned on, a subjective one. Um, endurance training is also shown to reduce low grade systemic inflammation and, and therefore it creates the potential to reduce localized inflammation. So if we reduce inflammation across the body, well, the lungs are part of the body, they get less, inflama less inflamed also. So asthma severity declines a bit. Studies have also demonstrated that endurance training can reduce this bronchial reactivity or this, this, this airway hyper sensitivity, which is basically less reactive airways thanks to endurance training. So all of these notions or all of this agrees with the notion that through proper management, even at the highest levels, all the way up at Olympic and world level, endurance athletes are not limited by their asthma. And, and we all, we've all seen how this is typically treated. It's inhaled corticosteroids or beta agonists. They're common, they're simple, they're proven. It's on you to decide if they're water approved and at what dosage. Repeat, it's on you. 
That's Absolutely. A, it's an important thing for all of us to understand here. Too many athletes getting popped unknowingly seeming. So, yeah. Next question, Jonathan. All right. It says, why do so many endurance athletes seem to have asthma? Okay. So, and we do, we fall prey to this and there's a number of reasons. So it's common in endurance athletes due to two, maybe three. And I might even touch on a fourth reason. Um, endurance exercise damages bronchial epithelial cells. So those bronchial tubes we just talked about lined with epithelium, we can damage those cells and this damage elicits a mild immune response. One of the possibilities is that due to sh the, the sheer stress that's due to our high ventilation rates causes this damage. But in counter to that, it's been noted that the sputum that people, you know, the, the, the gunk that people cough up contains cells that are often apoptotic, meaning they were scheduled for death anyway. They were basically waste. So the question then becomes, are we causing this or are we assisting this clearance? So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of hard to say. Um, the second possibility is, or a second factor is the Osmoller effects, which I just mentioned above. That's the drying of the airways, the increased blood concentration. Third is thermal effects. When we bypass nasal heating, the, and, and the cold, wear, cold air definitely worsens this effect, we, we set the stage for this, this bronchoconstriction. So airway cooling actually results in a reflex-driven parasympathetic response. So now we're talking about the rest and digest because the bronchioles are actually seeking to conserve heat by constricting. Effectively, they're trying to prevent cold air from entering the lungs. The solution in this case is simply to stop exercising, stop, stop cooling the lungs through hyperventilation, return to normal breathing, and the symptoms subside. And all of this Training is not doors. indicative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all of which is not indicative of a chronic disease. So this is just an affliction in the moment. This is something we can, we can get past. It does not mean we have asthma. Um, winter athletes and swimmers be warned here in kind of a special subset here. Obviously the thermal effects are especially prevalent in winter sports due to that cold air. I actually experienced it this morning and it was a bit of a wake up call. Um, secondly, swimming and Amber, I'm sure can attest to this because of chlorine and chlorine, chlorine based irritants can also induce this airway hyperreactivity. So why, I guess the other question then with this is why doesn't asthma seem to affect some endurance athletes. Yeah. And two replies to that one, it's very easily managed in most cases and two, uh, endurance training, as I just, as I just elaborated on has been shown to improve respiratory health. So a lot of us too, when we get, uh, so I get this after hard efforts in particular, whether it's called track hack race cough, whatever you <laughs> call cough. it, but mm -hmm. that, that coughing that just won't go away after a race. And sometimes it takes like a whole day for me to get to the mm. point where I stop coughing. Is that indicative of asthma in any way, Chad? Yeah. So, so maybe it's attributable to a lot of things, but it is not necessarily indicative of asthma. According to, again, the research that I spent my time combing over. Um, so, so all of those are possible causes, but it's important to recognize that asthma is a chronic long-term disease. It often gets lumped under the umbrella of chronic respiratory disease, whereas track hack is more likely that exercise induced bronchoconstriction we talked about, or something else called BHR, which is bronchial hyper-responsiveness in, in, in either case, it's a temporary respiratory occurrence. And in both cases, the, the bronchioles are just angry. That's it. They exhibit <laughs> unfavorable responses, whether it's immune driven, parasympathetic driven, it doesn't matter. It leads to airway inflammation and breathing becomes difficult. Both of those, the EIB and the BHR can happen without symptoms of asthma. So maybe no coughing, maybe no wisp, uh, wheezing, maybe no dyspnea. They both seem to be considered risk factors for the development and progression of asthma, but you can actually have both and still not be asthmatic. Good to know. So the, basically it's, it's tough to know where you like, if those things are signs also training, it kind of helps, but it also could kind of put you in a vulnerable position. So like, once again, the science isn't like directly conclusive, but it is very interesting. A Amber, did you notice that with pro athletes, that there were a lot of athletes that you raced with or raced against that had asthma at the top level? Yeah, but it never seemed to be really an issue. Um, I actually was diagnosed out of, you know, I got tested cause it was like, you try to figure out every little thing because you're trying to optimize everything. And just in case I got tested and I, I did get diagnosed with the mild case of asthma. I use an inhaler for a little while. I honestly, I didn't, I really didn't feel much of a difference at all. And it just kind of felt like keeping track of the inhaler, remembering to take it, it was, it was just, it, it didn't seem worth you know, the, the extra effort because I didn't really notice it much of a difference. So, um, I was surprised at the diagnosis because I didn't really 
mm. expect. Um, mm. I hadn't really noticed any major symptoms. It was more like I went in to see an allergy spe- specialist who kind of did like a full rundown because I wanted to just make sure there wasn't anything. I wasn't overlooking anything in particular. Um, so my case was obviously really mild though. Um, mm. But I never, I've never, I, in my experience, I didn't see it really being a limiter for anybody. Yeah, I wonder they, what the misdiagnosis yeah. rate is, considering it's it's so prevalent. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I, nah, I, I, I just wonder. I mean, because it's pretty easy to throw something like uh, as, as harmless as Ventolin at a problem and hope that that cures it, because there's no real negative effects to making that prescription, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nate, are you, uh, you have an inhaler. Are, is that because of asthma or allergies, or, or what's the situation there? I was diagnosed with asthma in college, and then... Uh, I take it before like hard efforts and I haven't always taken on every race and it's, it's only impacted me in two races in my life. One was the 5k effort at pyramid Lake and it's in August. And that is a one 5k is really hard and it is an allergy induced nightmare for me with sagebrush in August. And, uh-huh. um, that was like, I ended my race. And the second one was the P two one, um, down at land park when I was on Rikert's wheel. And afterwards I was like, <gasps> Could you? I was getting the uh, bronchitis hyper responsiveness, um, <laughs> kind of thing where I would, they were angry as Chad said, <laughs> yeah. but if so it was more of a, it's not like a performance increaser, but it's like, if I take it, I don't really know exactly, but if I take it, I don't have the, like the straw feeling ever when I mm-hmm. work out. And so it's preventative, but because it doesn't happen all the time, it's like, it's easy for me to say, I don't need it. I don't need it every time, Mm -hmm. but it's nice just to have it. So I have it on my, my desk, which is nice. And then usually before a race, I'll just do a puff or two and hopefully it's preventative. Yeah. And I'll just follow up and say it might like, I never had that breathing through a straw situation. So Mm -hmm. again, like my diagnosis was kind of a surprise and that that wasn't ever an issue for me. Otherwise probably I would have been more diligent about using the inhaler. I've only had the breathing through the straw twice, once as a young kid. And it was actually during like the, the PE mile run when I was, when we were kids and then, uh, but that one happened in August and then also once again in a crit, and this was maybe last year or the year before, uh, everything was fine. And then suddenly it was, I was breathing through a straw and mm-hmm. both times extremely bad allergy conditions and like, you know, so they've kind of aligned. So. I've never been, never gone through the process to be diagnosed or anything like that or, or go through with it, but it's interesting just the same. So if you're listening now and you have asthma, let us know in the comments, cause it'll be interesting just to see that's a very, it's not even remotely close to a study, but it'll just be interesting to see. <laughs>